In the previous video, we wrote a simple invariant to test that the total supply of ref is always equal to zero. We ran the test and the test passed, but we were getting many reverts. This means that a lot of the function calls to the ref contract was failing. So in this video, we'll improve on our invariant testing by writing another smart contract that will call into ref. This is called a handler based testing. So I've created a file here and we'll be writing our handler-based testing inside here. The topics of this videos are handler-based testing, which means that we're gonna be testing functions under specific conditions. I'll also show you how to target a contract for our invariant testing, and also how to target functions to call, targeting selectors. So let's get started. We'll start with the topic of handler-based testing. In the previous video, when we ran our invariant test, a lot of the function calls were failing. This is because Foundry will randomly call any function inside the WEF contract. But what we actually want to do is test the WEF contract under certain conditions. For example, here I have the WEF contract open, and what we want to test is make sure that when Foundry calls the function deposit, it would send some amount of beef. In other words, message.value will be greater than zero. So what we're going to do is first, we're gonna write a smart contract called handler that's gonna call the function deposit and we're gonna make sure that we send some ETH to the WEF contract. So to write the handler function, first I'm gonna import some library from Foundry. Here are the contracts that we're gonna need to write our handler contract. Next, we'll write the handler contract. So say contract, I'll name this handler and it will inherit all of the contracts that we just imported. Is common base TD cheats and std utils. Inside this contract, we'll save the address of ref. So say ref private ref. And inside the constructor, constructor, we'll pass in ref underscore ref and set ref equal to underscore ref. We'll also declare a fallback so that this contract will be able to receive if when this contract calls withdraw on ref. So say receive external payable. Next, we'll write some functions that this handler contract will call. For example, a function to deposit into f function, deposit for some amount, uint amount, and we'll make this public. And the function to withdraw, function withdraw for some amount, uint amount, public. Now going back to the WEF contract, scrolling up, we can also call deposit on the WEF contract by directly sending if. So we also want to test that over here. So here I'll say function send to fallback for uint amount public. Okay, so these are the functions that we'll implement. Later we'll write our invariant test and Foundry will call these specific functions send to fallback deposit withdrawal. So when Foundry calls the function deposit, how would we want to call the function ref inside here? Well, we'll want to call ref dot deposit and we want to send this much amount so say here value amount but nothing guarantees that this much amount of beef is locked inside this contract so what we're going to do is bound the amount of beef that we're going to be sending to the web contract to the actual amount that is locked inside this contract so say amount equals bound amount to the value between zero and the balance of this contract that will be address this dot balance. So what's going to happen here is Foundry will put in some random number and on the next time we're going to bound this random amount to a number between zero and the amount of beef that is locked inside this contract. Once this amount is bounded we'll call ref.deposit sending the amount of beef. And that completes the deposit function for now. We'll do something similar to send to fallback. So I'll copy this code, paste it here. When Foundry calls this function send to fallback with some random number, we'll bound this random number between zero and the amount of beef locked in this contract. And then next we're gonna call ref, but instead of calling the function deposit, we'll deposit by calling the fallback function. So to do that, I'll say address of ref dot call. I'm gonna be calling the fallback so the data will be empty. And we're gonna be sending some amount of beef. That'll be value amount. Call returns two outputs. What we're interested in here is the first output, boolean, whether the call was successful or not. And then we'll make sure that this call was successful by typing require, okay, else we'll say send to fallback failed. 
Okay, and that completes send to fallback function. What do we need to do for the withdrawal function? Again, this input amount will be a random input provided by Foundry. So we'll need to bound it to some amount. Similar to what we did for deposit, I'll first paste it here. And instead of bounding it to the amount of ETH that is locked in this contract, when we call the function withdrawal on WEF, what we want to bound it to is WEF.balance of address this. We're bounding the amount of ETH to withdraw from WEF to zero and the WEF balance of this contract. And then we'll call WEF.withdraw for the amount amount. Okay, that completes the handler contract for now. We'll come back to this contract later, but let's work on the invariant test. So I'll name this contract, contract WEF handler based invariant test is test. And then first, let's write the setup. So say WEF public WEF. And we're also going to deploy the handler contract that we just wrote above. So say handler public handler. And then next, we'll write the setup function. Function setup public. We'll deploy the WEF contract. WEF is equal to new WEF. And then we also deploy the handler contract. Handler is equal to new handler. Going back up, the constructor of handler takes in WEF as an argument. So here we'll provide WEF. And for this test, let's send 100 ETH to the handler contract. So I'll type deal address of handler 100 ETH. So that'll be 100 times 10 to the 18. Okay, next let's write our invariant test. So say function invariant. And for this example, let's test that the amount of ETH that is locked inside the WEF contract is greater than or equal to amount of ETH that was deposited from the handler contract. So here I'll type invariant ETH balance public and what we want to do is assert greater than or equal to amount of ETH inside the WEF contract address WEF dot balance should be greater than or equal to the amount of ETH that is deposited from the handler contract. Now to keep track of the amount of ETH that was deposited from the handler contract Let's go back up and inside here we'll declare a state variable that keeps track of the amount of ETH that was deposited. So here I'll type uint public wef balance and before we call the function deposit we'll increase this wef balance. So say wef balance plus equals amount and we'll do the same for deposit. Now for withdrawal, we'll decrement the WEF balance state variable. So replace this plus with a minus. So when we deposit, either by calling deposit or send to fallback, we'll increase this state variable called WEF balance. When we call the function withdraw on WEF, we'll decrease this state variable. So going back to our invariant test, we're going to assert that the amount of ETH that is locked inside the WEF contract Amount of ETH that was deposited from the handler. Handler dot WEF balance. This is the state variable that we just declared. Now before we run this invariant test, if we were to run this invariant test right now, Foundry will call functions both on WEF and the handler contract. But we want to tell Foundry to test the WEF contract by calling only the functions inside the handler contract. So to do that, we'll need to target the handler contract. And that brings us to our next topic, how to target the contract. So going back to our invariant test, what we'll tell Foundry is to target the handler contract and not to call any functions inside the WEF contract directly. To do that, I'll type target contract address handler. So now when we run the invariant test, Foundry will only call the functions inside the handler contract. So to show you this, I'm going to open my terminal and then we'll execute the test for invariant2.t.so. Execute the test and notice that our test passes and also notice that our reverts is now equal to zero. So before, when we were simply testing the WEF contract, we were getting a lot of function fails. But now since we're targeting the handler contract, the number of fails on each test went down to zero. And this is because we wrote the handler contract to test the WEF contract only under certain conditions. And then we also told Foundry to only target the handler contract. Now, similar to target contract, we can also target specific functions inside the handler contract. That brings us to our last topic, targeting selectors. So to do that, here 
I'll say target selector. And this is the function that we need to call to target the selectors. And for this example, let's target send to fallback, deposit, and withdraw. So to do that, first I'll create an array of selectors. Selectors are four bytes, so bytes for memory. I'll call it selectors. And this will be equal to new. We'll initialize an array of four bytes. Bytes for and we're targeting three functions. So here I'll initialize it to three. And then type selectors of zero is equal to. One of the functions that we'll allow to call will be handler.deposit dot selector. Okay, we'll do the same for two more functions. Selectors of one should be handler.withdraw. And the last one should be send to fallback. And then update the index. Next to call this target selector, what we need to do is pass in a struct called FUD selector. The address that we're targeting is address of handler. And the selectors that we're going to be targeting is selectors. Selectors is selectors that we just created above. Selectors. Okay, let's run the test again. So I'll open my terminal and then execute the test again. And the test still passes. Okay, but are we certain that Foundry is actually just calling these functions? To test our idea, what I'm going to do is create a function inside the handler. And what it's going to do is when this function is called, it's just going to fail. So say function fail public. And then inside here, if this function is called, it's going to fail. So revert fail. And going back to here, we're going to temporarily remove this and what I expect is that now we should get a lot of rebirths since some of the function calls will land here. To test this, I'm going to open the terminal again, execute the test, and the number of rebirths has gone up from zero. So it looks like at this point, this function fail is being called by Foundry. Okay, so let's test that this selector is actually working. What I'm going to do is uncomment it. And what we're telling Foundry now is only call the functions deposit withdraw or send to fallback. It's no longer going to call the function fail. Let's test this. So back inside the terminal, execute the test again. And again, the number of reverts is equal to zero, which means that this function fail is not getting called by Foundry. So in this video, I showed you how to write a handler based testing. And I'll also show you how to target a contract and target selectors for your invariant tests.